Good morning Internet. Um, it's a cold one today. We're in the frozen winter now. It is December. Um, right, as I said or showed you about a week ago, something like that, new car. So in usual style, um, I'm going to take you around it, have a quick walk around the outside and then we'll get inside, have a bit of a drive and uh, have a bit of a waffle about it. How's that? No? Okay. Well, uh, I tried. So to give it its full title, it is a BMW, obviously, uh, 435D M Sport Grand Coupe. Um, quite where the Grand Coupe comes from, I'm not so sure, because Coupe doesn't really suggest it should be a four-door car. But anyway, um, that's what it is. So, yeah, BMW, as per the wheels, nice wheels, Grand Coupe. Probably the wrong way around, but there you go. And it's uh, M Sport. So, there you go. Um, the colour is carbon black, as I think I've mentioned already, but in certain lights, um, from this angle, it looks blue. Uh, and when we first looked at the car, we did think it was a blue car, uh, but it's definitely carbon black. Um, interesting. So, what's it got? Um, obviously, um, keyless entry. You have got a key there, and you have got a key inside the fob. But all you've got to do, as long as you've got the key on you, you just do that, you just put your hand on it and uh, it opens up. It's also got uh, LED headlights which um, which are interesting because <laughs> when you drive you can have them in a mode where you basically have them on high beam all the time and it will actually dip them as uh, cars come towards you. But it does this weird matrix thing where it dances across the road and lights up the diverge. It's, um, it's a bit strange at first <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, you do get used to it. Not that I use it, to be honest. Um, what can I say about it? One of the interesting things, and this is something that sold it for the wife, um, who's yeah, who's got her plates on it now. It's her car. It's in her name. Uh, oh, it's an X drive as well. Forgot to mention that. There you go. It's a four wheel drive. You do the old wiggle, wiggle, and uh, yeah, up goes the boot. There you go. And I think I did this in the last video, but um, yeah. It's an interesting feature and something that she likes. Um, as it's her car, there you go. She enjoys it, but well, it's our car. We got rid of both cars, as I said, um, to get the one car. Um, we needed a four-door car. Let me just move over the post. We needed a four-door car uh, to accommodate changes in our life now. And to be honest, both cars used to sit on the drive most of the time. Um, so it kind of makes more sense to have the one car between us. Um, Yes, there are some times when it can be inconvenient, but yeah, such is modern life, eh? Right, let's get inside and um, I'll take you for a tour around the cabin. So it does come with a lot of goodies, this. We've got the programmable seats and um, yeah, obviously electric windows all the way around. We've got the, the Harman Kardon uh, for the stereo. Um, let's jump inside. Ooh, auto lights. Obviously, um, auto dimming mirror as well. Blah blah blah. It's uh, an automatic, it's got all the iDrive, it's got all the different sport settings as well. Just there, heated seats, which are a must this time of year. Um, what else? Mm, can't think at the moment, but uh, one of the good things about this, we obviously got both keys with it, and um, inside, in fact, if I switch it on, you might actually see it. There you go. You've got profiles, so you can set a profile up to each key. It's um, it's really good because what happens is, um, when I get in the car, it sets the seat, the mirrors, the radio station, everything to my profile. When the wife gets in the car, Debbie, um, it does the same. So rather than me getting in the car and going, oh Christ, nearly crippling myself on the seat, the seat's set before you get into the car. It's great. Uh, right, so lever interior obviously um like the black we had a bm before that had the cream in tear was really nice but a bugger to keep clean um yeah lots of little cubby holes you got um phone charging there uh usb uh that goes back and forward so you can set that the way you want it um another usb stuck there um little cubby hole you cup holders in just there uh, ac obviously yeah it's got everything so um yeah, let's um, let's stop waffling and let's uh, let's go for a little drive. So unfortunately, you've got to look at my ugly mug. Um, doesn't get much worse than this, so 
thanks for joining and thanks for sticking. Um, so it is automatic, you just hold the button on the side of the gear stick, pull it backwards, we're now in drive and we're off. It's obviously 3 litre twin turbo engine in the uh, 35D um, and it doesn't hang about. Uh, most of the time though I tend to keep it in eco mode um, which is giving me about 36 miles to the gallon uh, with a lot of people in around town. On a run you can get another above 40. Um, so yeah it's um, it's not bad on fuel for a 3 litre engine uh, twin turbo with something over 300 brake horsepower. Um, you have also got the flappy paddles which work in every mode um, I, I guess they're more meant for sport mode but they do work in every mode um, you don't need to put it into sport uh, or change any buttons at all um, the gear changes it's an eight speed um, gearbox absolutely silky smooth <laughs> very impressed with how it changes gear and even when you give it some um, the gear changes are not erratic at all it's, um, it's a very smooth car to drive and because of that I tend to find myself pooting it along which is crazy you know it will set the motorway speeds all day long and above if you wanted to um, I'm told <laughs> but uh, in the S3 great car as it was it used to um, it used to give you that urge to always go for it um, the wife wasn't very happy with the way it used to change gear because it was very snappy being a, a, a very uh, very powerful car and also it had a sports clutch in it but um yeah this one i mean it's just absolutely silky smooth if i just um, accelerate normally here so you can hear the engine building boom, straight to gear straight to gear boom, 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 into the outside lane and we're at motorway speed effortlessly yeah really really effortlessly um, and even when you're sitting at speed as you can hear it is it's quiet very quiet a little bit of wind noise from the mirror here um, but um, yeah <laughs> just, I'm speaking normally I'm not having to shout at all not raising my voice uh, and I'm sure you can hear me perfectly which is a good thing or a bad thing whichever way you look at it but yeah it drives absolutely silky smooth um, I was sort of adamant that I didn't want a newer car uh, for a long, long time. Uh, loved the S3, obviously, but I didn't really like the styling of newer cars. And one of the things that used to really bug me was the sat nav um, stuck, as I consider, on the dash. And we drove pretty much everyone in the Audi range. But the thing that always really bugged me, and it's crazy, I know, was the the bolt on on the dash. Now. This does stick up from the dash, but it kind of merges in. It's not intrusive. Um, and it does do what it says. Uh, it's very intuitive. The iDrive is brilliant. Uh, you can do lots of settings in it. Um, and once you've got in the car and it's all set up for you, there's very little you have to do with it. Um, set to a, a favorite radio station. I've got the USB plugged in if I need extra music. Um, but other than that, it's just sit back and relax. The one crazy thing about this, <laughs> and if anybody's ever driven a big sort of cruiser car, will probably relate to this. You've got to remind yourself to drive it. Now let me let me try and explain what I mean. So, because you're sitting in your favourite armchair with your heated seats on, your bolsters are all nice and tight and you're snug, and it's very little effort to drive it. Every now and again, you kind of go, "Oh, <laughs> wake up! I'm driving a car." Um, <laughs> It's a very bizarre feeling. So there you go. And first really drive with you guys um, of the 435D. Um, yeah, it's just a great all-round car. Um, didn't want a big car, got a big car, but it doesn't feel big when you're driving it, which is really bizarre. It just, as soon as we drove the car, as soon as we got into it, after driving all manner of Audi range and, and other cars as well, uh, even an SQ5, and, and believe me, SQ5s are quick. We got into this one, and it just, just felt good. It just felt right. It felt at home, and and that's the feeling I I got in the S3. As soon as I sat in it, it was like, yeah, nice and comfy. It's where I belong. And this has got similar feelings, um, if not the same feeling.
Um, again, do we need a three litre twin turbo? No. Is it nice to have it? Yeah, love the sound of a, well, a straight six in this case, but it does sound like a V6 as well. Um, but the thing, you know, it's that fairly Brodico sport at the moment. And there you go, that is just bang, straight to motorway speed in sort of no time at all. Uh, I think the official stats are something like 0 to 60 in five ish seconds. I can't remember exactly what it is. So, no, not really slower than the S3, to be fair. A lot more comfortable um, with the auto gearbox, a lot easier as well. Um, do I miss the gears? I did the first, I missed the manual gearbox. But this gearbox is so silky smooth that it does feel good. And it, it can feel engaging. I mean, if I put it in small and start using the flappy paddles and everything else, it can still feel engaging. But uh, yeah, there you go. There is the, uh, the new car for everybody to see. Um, any questions, any comments, please leave them down there somewhere in that, that, that committee section. Um, if they're snotty ones, well, that's your choice. I'll probably lead them. <laughs> the power of the internet. Um, no, to be fair, I don't get many snotty comments. Um, the odd one or two, but there you go. That's what happens when you uh, you put yourself out. Ooh, I just seen an M4. Mm, do I need an M4 in my life? Oh, oh, this is almost as quick. Almost. Anyway, right, I'm going to carry on driving. Again, likes, comments, anything you like on there. And um, hopefully in the future there'll be some more content on this car. I'll be honest, I can't see me doing a lot of repairs on it. Um, I will do my own oil changes because... I'm not saying I don't trust garages, but I prefer to do my own oil changes. Um, I want to get the wheels off at some point and clean the brake rotors up. They look fairly new on it, I think they've been replaced. Um, or they are the, the brand new ones, or they are the factory ones, sorry. But um, they're just starting to rust uh, around the rotor itself, and I just like uh, like to keep them clean. But um, yeah, there you go. Ooh, that was the start stop, by the way. <laughs> I pulled up at the roundabout, and the start stop was on. I usually switch it off. But um, yeah, it um, it stopped. <laughs> that took a lot of getting used to that. That all of a sudden, even though I know it's going to happen, it um, caught me a bit by surprise. There, you may have noticed. It feels like the car's just cut out, but it hasn't. No, you put your foot on the accelerator and it's off again. <sighs> right, <laughs> time to head home. Thanks for joining me, um, and sorry this has been a bit of a waffle, but I did want to get this over and done with out of the way. Um, I'll try and do an update on the running costs when I've had it for a, a little while. Um, we have got a trip uh, of some distance next week, so that will be a good indication of um, what it's doing miles per gallon. Um, and diesel's 180 at the moment, it's gone up again, so it's not going to be as cheap as a petrol when you consider that, yes it will do more miles, but it's a lot more expensive. But um, it's modern life for you, isn't it? Yeah, it's um, our global partners are doing a very good job at keeping us uh, just there. Right, catch you later, YouTube. Cheers for now.